um, I'm sure your presentation will be very beneficial to all the attendees. Thank you very much. Okay, Over thank you. Thank you for, for the introduction. Well, the, the lecture of today is about the, well, it's already presented, and I have to say that is part of my collaboration with uh, Professor Chris Narredi. In fact, uh, he was the, all the, the idea come, come from him, and he decided the, the first uh, test and the, the conditions of the test uh, with the idea to, to develop a fighter mediation uh, technology for the recovery of some polluted sites in the Chicago area. Well, in this uh, presentation today, uh, we are going to explain the interest of the remediation of the miscontamination sites. I mean, there is some uh, available technologies uh, nowadays that we can apply for the miscontamination uh, sites, but most of them uh, show some uh, limitations like inefficient delivery of the regions. Um, for instance, the stabilization methods, perhaps in the future, these um, stabilized uh, contaminants can be mobilized. The different changes in texture and properties of the soils that results in a, an even uh, remediation of the different parts of the soil, and then the large courts of chemicals and, and energy. So it is important to find alternative technologies for the sustainable uh, remediation of these soils. And one option is the phytoremediation. Phytoremediation is considered a sustainable uh, remediation technology that uses um, the uh, capacity of green plants for the removal of contaminants. And the good point is that phytoremediation is able to remove a uh, low or moderate concentration of contaminants, but any kind of contaminants, heavy metals, organic contaminants, pesticides, inorganic anions, any kind of contaminants can be removed with the right definition of the technology in the, in the field. So it's going to be appropriate for the remediation of mixed contaminated sites. Um, well, the phytotechnologies uh, involved in the process implies, uh, well, for instance, the accumulation in the plant of the contaminants, the inorganic contaminants like the metals, this is called phytoaccumulation, or the absorption and degradation of the organic contaminants, this is called phytodegradation. Other option is the uh, degradation in the rhizosphere, so the area of the soil around the, 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 the roots, um, the plant generates uh, the conditions for the development of fungi and bacteria, and that fungi and bacteria is able to remove those contaminants, the degrade, degrade those contaminants. So this is called rhizodegradation. When we uh, move to uh, water systems, the retention of the contaminants is called rhizofiltration. So we can remove from the water the, the contaminants, trapping that into, into the roots, into the plants. And another possibility is the stabilization of the metals uh, in the soil, forming less soluble fractions, and that is called phytostabilization. Finally, the plants absorb water, and with that water, uh, the plant can absorb the contaminants that goes to the leaves, and then they are volatilized to the uh, atmosphere, and that is called phytovolatilization. Some authors also includes phytohydraulics, so they try to distinguish between the volatilization of the contaminants and the volatilization of uh, water from the, from the groundwater to the atmosphere. And some other authors include these two technologies in the same. So uh, we have a set of different uh, phytotechnologies and we can use different plants for the uh, accumulation or degradation of the different kinds of contaminants. What are the main benefits? Well, the main benefits is um, the is, is environmentally bending technology. It also increases the typical properties of the of the soil, and um, it requires a very low amount of energy and chemicals. So it is uh, it's a technology that with a um, minor uh, monitoring and supervision and uh, the consumption of other elements. What are the limitations? The limitations uh, for the phytoremediation is uh, we cannot go further than the, the depth of the roots. 
in general, we need long treatment times because we are subjected to the biological cycles. The efficiency is limited by the, the, the growth of the biomass, the biomass production. Uh, only some species shows this phytoremediation capacity. I mean, some species may grow in the contaminated soil, but that not means that they are going to remove the contaminants. Only some species are able to degrade the organics and accumulate the inorganic contaminants like the metals. And then the other limitation is the bioavailability of the contaminants. So in general, for the phytoremediation, we need more than one uh, harvest or year for the complete remediation of the soil. And that is why we uh, think about the combination of the electrokinetics with the phytoremediation with the idea to use an electric field to increase the phytoremediation capacity of the plants. The electric field may enhance the bioavailability of the contaminants, so they are going to be removed faster and also increase the bioavailability of the nutrients, so the plant is going to grow faster. So with these two, at least these two um, processes, we are going to be able to produce more biomass and remove more contaminants in the same period of time. Moreover, uh, with the appropriate uh, configuration of the electrodes, we can extend the uh, application of the technology further than the uh, than the area of the roots, the root surface. Okay, so if we apply, if we introduce an anode and a cathode, we are going to be able to transport the contaminants in one direction of the other, uh, in the direction of the roots. So when the contaminants get to the roots, they are going to be trapped. And even we can uh, use different configurations, so we can extend deeper in the soil the transportation of the contaminants in the direction of the roots. So we can extend the uh, remediated area. Okay, so the variables to, to consider is in general the, electro, the electrode configuration, the electrode materials, uh, then the type of current and the intens intensity, the mode of operation, if we are going to apply continuously the electric field or periodically or inverting the, the, the polarity and the possibility of using some facilitating agents that favor the mobility of the contaminants so they are going to be more available. What are the negative effects? The negative effects is the electric field is going to mobilize many ions and perhaps the concentration of the contaminants are too high to higher and um, we increase um, the phytotoxicity and acceptable levels so we are going to de depress the the biological activity of the plant due to the concentration of the contaminants or perhaps with ph changes if the ph due to the application of the electricity goes very acidic or very alkaline um, is going to be also very difficult for the plant to survive in that conditions so uh, not all not always the uh, electric current is going to uh, give a beneficial effect uh, to the soil so it's very important to adjust the application of the electricity uh, i mean the the time intervals and the intensity uh, to minimize those negative effects. So in a first study, um, we use uh, a soil, a model soil that um, represents the, a contaminated site in the area of the Chicago with uh, PAHs and heavy metals. And the idea is to try to identify plants and conditions for the effective removal of these contaminants. Well, this study was published here in this paper. And well, you can see here the composition. We have two naphthalene and phenantrine, two organic contaminants and three metals. And we selected uh, two plants, O plant and sunflower. Why these two plants? Because uh, the team of Professor already selected a uh, important uh, wide uh, range of, of plants and these two grows very uh, fast in this soil so 
it is uh, believed that these are the best candidates for this study. Um, in this study, we apply 25 uh, volts of alternate current, three hours a day. And during uh, 30 days, the plants were led to grow. And after 30 days, we apply the electricity. And one month later, we uh, harvest all the plants and analyze the plants and soil. Well, you can see here the, the tests of the old plant and sunflower with no electricity and electricity. And during the, the experiments, some variables uh, were recorded. And at the end of the experiment, some samples were taken from the, uh, from the, from the pot and analyzed for metal and Newton concentration. Well, the first is uh, the first determination was the germination of plants and the survival. And as you can see, there is not too much difference between the test with and without electricity probably because we apply a not very intense uh, electric field. That is why there is not too much uh, influence. And then you have to consider also that the electricity was on only after 30 days. So in the beginning, there was not obviously not effect. If you can see the, the, the height of the plants, you can see there is not too much difference between the test with and without electricity, as you can see also Sorry, you can see also in this uh, plot, there is not too much difference between the old plant with and without electricity and the sunflower with and without electricity. But the main difference was observed Okay, this is going too slow. Yep. The main difference was observed in uh, the production of biomass. We can see that the presence of the electricity enhanced the production of biomass, especially in the roots for both plants, the old plant and also the sunflower. Okay, And that, that may have a, a significant influence in the final results. Well, there's not too much difference between one test and the other for the soil pH at, at the end of the test. And the same happened with the uh, redox potential. But the electric conductivity was very different depending on the presence uh, of electricity and the plant. When we have plant and electricity, we can see uh, higher uh, electric conductivity. And that means that the interstitial fluid contains more ions, more ions that could be the heavy metals or could be the uh, the nutrients. We analyze the nutrients and uh, we measure the exchangeable nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And as you can see, there is not a general trend, but at least in the potassium, we can observe that the test with electricity and plants, uh, the concentration are much uh, smaller than in the blank and the, the test with no um, with no plants. And that means that probably the potassium was released, was mobilized and consumed uh, as a necessary nutrient for the growing of the, of the plants. So perhaps the electricity has a significant influence in the development of the biomass due to the mobilization of the nutrients. And then if we go to the metals, we can see how the lead and then the cadmium and also the chromium decreases slightly the concentration in the soil and that is related to the presence of the plant and e electricity although there is not a clear difference between the test between uh, the test uh, with or without electricity what is very noticeable is the exchangeable fraction of the lead chromium and cadmium as you can see i'm going to go back the lead was completely immobilized and this is a very good result because the plant and the and the application of the, the electricity was able to immobilize and reduce the bioavailability of the lead so the lead is going to be there but it's not going to be uh, toxic for for the ecosystem and then we can see a, a very low concentration of a chromium suggesting that 
uh, is going to be uh, uh, removed by the plant or uh, immobilized in the soil, and then an um, increase in the concentrations of the cadmium. I mean, the different response of the different metals are related with the different chemical nature of the metals. And that is also very important to be considered. And we are going to see it later, uh, similar results to, to this. And then for the PAHs, we did not detect the naphthalene. We detected the phenantrine. And as you can see, there is a significant reduction, but it was similar in all the, in all the tests. Probably uh, naphthalene and phenantrine were removed not only uh, by the uh, activity of the plant, but also the microorganism in the soil and probably some physical chemical process, including uh, volatilization. Probably uh, in these uh, uh, experiments, we apply an um, electric field not very intense, and that is why we cannot observe significant difference between the uh, test with and without electricity. And probably in the future, if we apply a more intense electric field or for longer periods of time, we can see uh, more differences. That is why in the next study, we decided to uh, test the uh, response of the soil to the application of the electricity. We selected three different soils with three different characteristics, and we apply and a constant a direct electric field to see how the distribution of the potential uh, was in the soil during four days, and also the effect in the pH and electric conductivity in the different fractions. And as you can see in the beginning, the distribution was, is, um, I mean, almost uh, uniform from anode to cathode, and then after four days, we can see that the um, electric potential was mainly concentrated in one side of the, of the soil. And that happens for soil one, soil two, and also for soil three, but in a lower extent. Those, those results are related with the uh, physical chemical changes in the soil induced by the electricity. We are going to have a decrease of the pH in the anode, an increase of the pH in the cathode, and also an increase of the electric conductivity, mainly in the cathode and in the anode. So um, the idea of this study is to uh, identify a soil that resists the, uh, I mean, the physical chemical properties of the soil do not change very fast with the application of the electricity. So the plants are not going to be affected negatively. And that is why we selected soil three, because it seems that absorb better the, 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 the effect of the electricity. So we decided to uh, use soil three, and then we apply different potential gradients, 10, 20, 30, and 40 volts. As you can see at 40 volts, we can observe in just four days, we can observe very different behavior from the uh, initial day to four days. But at 10 volts, the behavior is exactly the same. So probably 40 volts is too much and 10 volts is too slow, no changes. So for the um, electrokinetic, uh, uh, I mean, the combination of the factor remediation with electricity, we need some effect, but not too intense. That is why we are going to select 20, 30 volts for our test. And probably we're going to be conservative and we're going to select only 20 volts and see what happens. So we apply these 20 uh, volts to the soil three with three different plant species adapted to the soil and the climate, local climate conditions. And as you can see, the uh, current intensity and the pH profile was not very different from one soil to the to the other, from one test to the other. Okay, but when we uh, see the distribution of the electric field, as we can see, as you can see, the in the beginning, this is the blue line, is the initial uh, profile. Then the um, 
the, the potential gradient strength to be accumulated in one side of the, of the soil. But with this plant, we observe a low growing in the 10 days of the test. The second plant, Brassica rapa, shows a much higher growing. This plant grows very fast. And the sea maize, well, uh, just uh, barely uh, germinates. And well, the production of the bio mice was, was minimum. And what is important here is after 10 days, you can see in 10 days is the dotted line. The dotted line fits exactly the distribution of the initial um, the initial distribution of the um, potential drop in the soil. So it seems that the presence of the biomass also ameliorate the physical chemical changes in the soil induced by the electricity. So we uh, concluded in this study that perhaps soil three and this species uh, Brassica rapa are going to be a good selection for the uh, phytoremediation test enhanced with electricity because of the capability of the system to minimize the physical chemical changes of the soil. So we're going to minimize the negative effects. Okay. And Brassica rapa is also a local species here, is adapted to the climate and the soil and belongs to the Brassica genus, which is widely known as a species, a group of species that uh, with a phytoremediation capacity. So in the next study, we decided to uh, use this species with the same soil, uh, amended with 10% of topsoil to favor the, I mean, to supply nutrients and to favor the, the fast growing with the metal contamination, the similar metal contamination as before. And we use Brassica rapa with electricity and without electricity, and then grass with and without electricity. And then we combine the two species and we use a control test with no plants. In this study, well, we determine the profile of the voltage drop along the test after one month, and we cannot see very significant difference between one test and the other. And also we analyze the pH. So as you can see, the pH in the center of the soil is going to be very similar in all the tests with and without electricity. What is different is in the anode and cathode. In the anode, in the, anode the pH tend to be uh, lower because of the, high, um, the decomposition of water by the electricity. And in the cathode, uh, tend to increase. But the, the important thing is what happened with the metals in the test. We have three plots here, one for cadmium, the second for chromium, and the last one for lead. We are going to analyze each of them separately. As you can see for the cadmium, when we apply electricity in the cathode, sorry, in the anode, we are going to find a low concentration, in the middle, a higher concentration, and then in the, in the cathode, uh, the highest concentration. That is why, because the cadmium is a cation and it moves due to the electricity, to the electric field in the direction of the cathode and it's going to be concentrated in, concentrated in the cathode. And that happens in all the tests with electricity, okay? In the test with no electricity, we mix everything and we have only one value. And what we observe is a significant removal with both species. And we can conclude that the presence of the plant and the electricity favor the removal of the cadmium. What happened with the chromium? The chromium was added as an anion. So the transportation is going to be exactly the opposite. It's going to be concentrated in the anode. Okay. And also we observe some removal, not so significant as the cadmium, because probably in this case, the plants are able to absorb cations, but not anions, but also an important interesting uh, removal. And that removal was especially important in the mixed uh, culture. I mean, when we combine the two species, the grass with Brassica rapa. And finally, the lead, the lead, we, uh, we have serious difficulties to remove the lead because the lead was 
very fast absorb and immobilize in the soil. And that is why the electric conductivity, I mean, the, the electricity was not able to transport the lead in any of those directions. That is why in all the tests, we can see almost a flat profile in the anode in the center and in the cathode side of the, of the cell. And even the, the removal uh, are not so important and, as, the, as the cadmium. What is important is in this mixed uh, test with uh, both um, plants, we are able to remove significant am amounts. So probably the electricity and the combination of different species are going to be beneficial for the removal of these uh, metals. In the next study, we decided to include, again, the same contaminants, chromium, lead, and cadmium, and also the PAHs, phenantrine, and anthracene. And we uh, designed a full set of experiments to determine what is the influence of the contaminants, because we have heavy metals, only heavy metals, only organics, and the combination of organics and heavy metals. And we are going to use different types of electricity, alternate current, direct current, direct current with polarity, uh, well, sorry, with periodic application. So it's on off, this is continuous. This one is continuous, this is going to be on off. And this is with the polarity inversion. The polarity inversion was designed to minimize the uh, acidification in the anode and the uh, alkalinization in the cathode, okay? And all these tests were compared with some blanks with no electricity and no plants. So germination. The germination, after, uh, after some time, we observed that the presence of the organics uh, reduced the germination, but after the application of the electricity on the test, we observed that in general, all the, um, all the soils and tests have a similar, similar germination. I mean, it seems that the organics here has a, a little bit smaller, but the difference are not so important. What is going to be very different is the plant height. I mean, in the clean soil, we observe the higher heights of the plants. The presence of the contaminants, organic or inorganic contaminants, decrease the uh, height of the plant. And the lower heights was observed when we combine the two contaminants. So two different contaminants, metals and organics, more toxicity, less uh, height. And also, uh, considering the different types of electricity, we also observe that the, the, the continuous application of the electricity decrease the height of the plant and the periodic application or the polarity uh, inversion uh, resulted in higher plant height. But the, what is more important is the production of biomass and the production of biomass show similar results. In the clean soil, we have more production of biomass and the presence of metals or organics decrease the production of biomass. And when we have the two contaminants, the production of biomass reach the lowest value, okay? And what is interesting when we compare the different types of electricity is the direct current tend to produce less biomass and the uh, test with alternate current produce much biomass. What happened with the metals? Well, in general, with the metals, we observe some removal, but there is not a clear trend uh, between one test or the other. In, it seems that the alternate current is not going to be very effective in at least in some of these, uh, for instance, for chromium or also for, for uh, lead or in some cases, cadmium. But well, we observe some uh, significant removal of uh, metals in the different uh, tests, and probably we need to confirm these results in a additional test at longer treatment time, not only for 45 days. But it's clear the removal of the organics. Phenantrine is going to be more effectively removed than anthracene, and when we have only the organics, we are able to remove most of the contaminants. But when we um, 
when the contaminant, the, the organic contaminants are combined with the heavy metals, the concentrations are going to be higher. So the toxicity of the metals decrease the biological activity of the plants and the biological activity in the rhizosphere and decrease the removal of the PAHs. And we observe better results with the uh, alternate current. So at least for the organics, we can conclude that the alternate current and the higher production of the biomass due to the alternate current and minimizing the uh, toxicity of the metal is going to be very beneficial for the removal of these uh, contaminants, the organic contaminants. Well, finally, in the fourth study, we decided to test different electrode materials with, in this case, rye grass. Why rye grass? Because rye grass grows very, very fast and can be applied uh, in, in most of the soils and in, in different uh, types of soils and, and climate conditions. So the question is, if we apply well, this study is divided in two parts. The first part is the influence of the electricity in the germination and growing. So we use, in this case, graphite and titanium as electrodes, and we apply a small um, electricity, a small in intensity, uh, right after the seeding. And we tested if that electricity has uh, an influence in the in the germination or not. And as you can see, there is a clear influence in the germination. So the application in the very beginning of the electricity is going to favor the germination of the plants, okay? And we tested different electrode materials, aluminum, graphite, and stylish steel with clean soil and contaminated soil with metals, organics, and mixed contamination. As you can see here, the better results are observed in germination here that corresponds with 0 0.2 volts per centimeter. So when we uh, apply a small, uh, a low intensity electric field in the, during the germination, we favor the germination of the plants. And the, the germination was better with graphite as, and stainless steel because these electrodes are stable and do not release um, ions or toxic ions to the uh, environment. However, with aluminum, the aluminum is going to be dissolved and release aluminum-3 to the medium, and probably that increase the toxicity and reduce the germination. The question is, when we go to the contaminated metals, we observe a reduction in general, we observe a reduction in the germination ratio of the rye grass. But that germination, I mean, this um, probably the, the, the decrease of the germination is due to the, um, to the toxicity of the contaminants, obviously. But if we apply higher um, uh, current intensity, so instead of 0 0.2, we go to 0 0.4 or 0 0.8, for instance, in this test or in this test, we can overcome the um, toxicity of the, um, of the soil. So basically is, here I have a, a specific germination. When the soil is contaminated, the germination decreases. <laughs> Perhaps somebody has to mute the microphone. Okay. So what I'm saying is uh, we have a specific germination rate in the presence of the electricity. So we can enhance the germination rate. But that germination decreases due to the contamination of the metals, metals or the organics. But we can recover the germination rate if we increase the uh, voltage we apply in the beginning of the test. So it seems that the application of the electricity is able to suppress or minimize the negative effects of the contaminants during the germination. 
and that is a, a very interesting uh, result for the application of uh, this technology at field scale. And similar results were served with um, in the plant height. So the plant height in the clean soil was observed at 0 0.2 volts per centimeter, and then the plant height decreases with the contaminants in the soil. But if we apply uh, more uh, higher intensity to the soil, we can increase that plant height. So it's, it's like the electricity is going to minimize or suppress the toxicity of the contaminants during the germination and in the first stages of the development of the plant. Okay. And then in the second part of this study, we decided to test for ryegrass. We decided to test the effect of the uh, direct current, alternate current, and the inversion of polarity. And everything was compared with a control test with no electricity. And we use the similar uh, contaminants with different concentration. Well, as you can see in the results, we have here the clean soil and then the contaminated soil. In the clean soil, we use graphite and titanium and graphite graphite. And as you can see, well, the better results for uh, the first case corresponded with the uh, direct current. I mean, the, the high apply plant height corresponds with the direct current and not the other tests. And with graphite graphite, we also obtain the um, higher result with direct current, but much better than the previous one. So probably um, the idea is to use a stable electrode materials that do not supply negative or, or toxic elements to the soil that are going to affect the germination and growing of the plant. And graphite is, in this case, better than titanium and is going to be cheaper. So perhaps we can consider graphite for further studies at higher um, scale. And then when we go to the contaminated soil, what we observe is that the plant height was even better in, in the test with alternate current. But this is only the height. The amount of biomass is going to be much higher in the alternate current. So that suggests that the alternate current could be a interesting, a very interesting uh, option because we are going to be able to produce more biomass. If we produce more biomass, probably we're going to be able to remove more contaminants. And in this case, it was like that. We can see, or you can see here, like the test with the alternate current resulted in the lower, the lowest concentration of the three metals, lead, chromium, and cadmium, compared with the other test. And what happened with the phenantrin and anthracene? Probably the phenantrin and anthracene are removed due to the activity of the plant, but also other biological process and physicochemical processes. Anyway, the uh, alternate current show one of the best uh, removal rates of the, of the organics, similar to the direct uh, current, okay? So as a conclusion, of at least from this test is we can use stable materials for the uh, electrodes or at least materials that are, are not going to release toxic com contaminants, toxic elements to the soil to minimize the negative effects in the plants and in the biota of the soil. And the alternate current, it seems that is going to be a good option. So all the, uh, the, the general conclusion for all the studies is for the for the right application of um, phytoremediation and hand with uh, electricity, we need to select local plant species adapted to climate and soil conditions, and then that plant species has to be uh, capable of removing the contaminants. Okay, so I, I said it before: some plants are going to be able to survive in the presence of the contaminants, but they do not remove the contaminants. So we have to select those that are able to remove the contaminants. When we apply an electric uh, field, electric current 
in the vicinity of the plant, we are going to change the physicochemical properties of the soil and those changes may uh, produce negative effects in the plant. So it is suggested, at least for our study, that we have to keep relatively low the voltage gradient around the plant. And the type of current, the alternate current, show very promising results for large scale application, although other types of current, I mean, direct current, continuous periodic polarity inversion, also can be considered because the difference between the alternate and the other were not so important, at least at this laboratory level. And just as a, a suggestion, uh, the idea is to, or at least in my opinion, it is necessary to go to uh, large scale uh, and longer treatment times to evaluate if the uh, application of the electricity is going to be uh, technically feasible and also beneficial at field scale for the removal of those contaminants. Finally, I want to include the list of the of the manuscripts already published, uh, included in this presentation, and also comment also my my collaborators. Uh, the first one is Professor Reddy, and also some of these uh, of his uh, students like uh, Chirakara. Also, some collaborators in the University of, of Vigo, uh, Dr. Gobella and Professor Urejola. And, and also um, uh, Dr. Buster from Mexico and his stu head student uh, Acosta uh, that was here uh, some years ago uh, doing uh, some part of these uh, results. And that's all for uh, my presentation. Uh,